This is what's called a groat, a four pence. This is of King Edward the Third, and King Edward the Third of England is a guy I've always had a pretty big interest in. I don't want to say uh, always. Let's maybe only going back seven years, but just from reading a lot of books about the Plantagenet line of kings, and especially the Hundred Years' War. I still never collected any coins of England. Never collected hammered medieval coinage, really. Uh, but this became available at a spink auction that I was watching some other coins in. And I threw out a bid, you know, because it was not a lot. I don't know, like 400, 300 bucks. And I won. Uh, you know, I didn't even bid actively at the in the live auction. I just put out a pre-bid and won. I'm very glad I did. This coin, it turns out, I did not even know this when I placed the bid. But then just after winning and looking up the coin a little more, uh, it's, the, it's the plate coin for the book written by the former owner of this coin, who's now since deceased recently, who is Lord Stewart B., formerly Ian Stewart who uh, became a peer of the realm, which I suppose is what you're supposed to try to do if you're, if you're an English guy and you're rich. This guy was a banker, and I, I believe this is his handwriting here uh, on this. This was included. They sent it to me with the coin. And, and this guy, you know, very sadly, had a huge collection of the earliest Scottish coins, which he was a the leading expert on stolen from his home uh, his home was burglarized he was not home fortunately and they stole all his Scottish coins and he offered a reward his wife mentioned that she really hoped that they would be found before he passed away because it was eating at him and they were not really valuable coins he was an academic collection they were not really great looking but this guy had been studying them since he was very young. And, you know, that's how, you know, like, like my dad collected coins since he was a kid, and I have too. Something becomes attached to the coin itself besides just that it's whatever coin it is. You have your memories of collecting coins and looking at coins and, and when you got them and how you got them. And this guy, he, uh, you can see here, He got this coin back in 1997, and we know the date here, September 26th. Uh, a, I could tell you, maybe I'll put in the description of which auction house he got this from on this date. I don't know what this uh, represents here, but but Spink did, and they put that in there in the lot description. So anyway, this guy published a book of hammered English coinage. And this is the plate coin for this particular specimen, this variety. And this is called pre-treaty. And as we can see, Lordian Stuart P. Struck in London. And he identified some other specific designation or you know, unique attribute around. <laughs> see, I don't know. Maybe I don't deserve to have this, but I like to have anything, especially that's a plate coin. That inspires me to go buy the book, probably, so I can show this to my kid and say, look, you got the coin that's in the book. And why would this be such an attractive specimen? You know, it's not like it's mint state or anything. The toning is something that's very attractive to collectors of these kinds of coins. And it has obtained a nice iridescent, bluish, greenish toning and Edward's face is somewhat expressive from what you can see from what's left of it and that crown sure looks nice and we can of course read Edward right on the coin and then going around here it's kind of off the fly unfortunately but uh, what a nice coin and you know if you know anything about the hundred years war or the three Edwards you can't help but be excited to hold this in your hands because Edward III, definitely my favorite of the three, 
His grandpa, Edward I, is the white-haired, tough guy king featured in the movie Braveheart. His dad is the uh, effeminate, poofy guy featured in the movie Braveheart, who you'll recall was marrying that really hot French princess who met with Mel Gibson for a moment in the woods. And you'll recall that she kind of threatened the grandpa, King Edward I, who, do you think your kid's going to have any kids? You know, who's, who's going to run your empire, your kingdom? Well, she did have a kid. She had this guy. And this guy turned out to be a hard ass. Very popular with his peers, the lords of the realm. England had always been running into civil wars for hundreds of years before. Uh, Edward I's dad, who I believe was Henry III, lots of problems. King John, of course, who was Henry III's dad, lots of problems. They made him sign the Magna Carta. Before that, I believe Henry I, who I believe was King John and King Richard's dad, a lot of struggles with the uh, the other lords of the realm. This guy, you know, he made it all work. And he made France the enemy. Or maybe France made him the enemy. One way or another, that common enemy really helped draw them together. And, of course, Scots, the Scottish, were always siding with the French. This is even before there was a Catholic-Protestant divide. You know, so this was a thing that was going on way before that. Because everyone was Catholic. They are just Christian. You know, there, there had not yet been... A reformation because this is from the 13 this particular coin is probably from the 1350s uh, so when the hundred years war was cooking this guy started it or it got started under his watch however you want to look at it this guy was present and personally involved in the battle of Sluys even was injured they believe maybe with an arrow in the leg Sluys was a sea battle where Edward took the initiative because the, the French had been raiding the sea coast of England. And so he went and he burned up their fleet that was anchored at the Flemish port of Sluys. Then, of course, the very famous Battle of Crecy, where the English longbowmen slaughtered lots of English knights, just wiped them out. Maybe they got stuck in the mud, who knows, but that was a uh, one of the first great examples of the longbow. And then again, the French did not learn 1356, the Battle of Poitiers, where this guy's kid, who did not end up becoming Edward IV, he was known as the Black Prince, but he died later before his dad, sadly. An excellent warrior. Uh, later, unfortunately, got cooked, hooked up with Pedro the Bad of Spain. That should have been a clue, the name. You know, he's, don't, don't hang out with Pedro the Bad, but, but he did. Um, and ironically, the Black Prince captured the King of France at the Battle of Poitiers, who was Jean Le Bon, John the Goodfellow, who was taken prisoner, taken to England, along with his son, the Dauphin, and tons of dough was paid to the English as ransom for those guys. And castles were built all over Wales, in England with that money and that was this guy's kid so imagine that your kid calls you up he's like hey dad guess what what I just beat the hell out of a huge French army and I captured the king of France sending him over to your place this guy was not even there at that point so he was at Crecy he was at Sluys both successes of the English but his son won the Battle of Poitiers, and even, I mean, you know, in chess, you win. Bad news for the French. This guy is, uh, who was it? Was it the grandson, the son of the Black Prince who became the king after this guy died? Richard II. Uh, not so good. He's the guy who ended up having to be deposed. There was a peasant's revolt, and that's how you get uh, Henry of Bolingbroke who would become Henry IV, and then had his son, Henry V, who won the Battle of Agincourt in 1415. So there you have it, a beautiful coin from Spink. Enjoy.